As we all know, in Elden Ring there is a whole plethora of weapons and items you can use to create all sorts of crazy builds. In fact, we've pretty much covered all of them on this channel, but there's one specific build that we haven't covered yet, and that's why today I'm going to be showing you the unstoppable tank build. Not only does it have the highest defense, but we're also utilizing some healing powers to essentially give us infinite HP. So if you're excited to see this extremely broken build, make sure you hit that like button down below. And if you're new around here and you want to stay up to date with all of the Elden Ring content, make sure that you're subscribed and that way you'll never miss a future video. But with that said, let me show you this crazy tank build. Now as you can see on screen, this is in fact the entire build. And I know you're probably thinking that this is an extremely heavy build to use, but even with all of this gear equipped, we are still in a medium weight class and just like the rest of the builds on this channel, this character is only level 150. In fact, I'm just going to throw up the stats on screen for you and as you can probably expect from a tank build, most most of our points are going into both Vigor and Endurance. But just to obviously quickly go through them, we've got 60 points in Vigor, 24 points in Mind, 50 points in Endurance, 22 points in Strength, 15 in Dexterity, and then 38 points in Faith. I haven't touched Arcane or Intelligence, and they're at 10 because the beginning class for this build is the Wretch class, so every single stat starts off at 10. Like I mentioned a moment ago, our main focus is of course delving as many points as we can into health, as well as in endurance to ensure that we have the largest health bar available to us and the ability to equip the best armor. Now the reason why the HP is only 60 and no more is because 60 is actually the soft cap in the vigor stat because the amount of HP that you get from going from level 50 to level 60 is 196 extra HP but if we were to then go from 60 to 70 we'd only be getting an extra 59 points. So it's beneficial to stay at 60 for your vigor and then have 50 endurance because with the talismans that I'll talk about in a moment that will give us enough equipment load to use all of the items in this build whilst keeping ourselves in the medium weight class and then obviously for all of you keen eyed viewers out there you would have seen that I've got the blasphemous blade equipped hence why we've got 22 points in strength 15 in dexterity and then 38 points in faith the strength and dexterity are the minimum requirements for the blasphemous blade and I'm sure for those of you that have used this weapon before you know why we're pumping everything into faith because we're going to abuse the absolute hell out of the takers for flame and it purely scales with faith so that is why all of our points are essentially pumped into faith and again with our endurance so high that allows us to use the best armor in the game which is the bull goat armor and for those of you that maybe don't know how to obtain this all you need to do is complete the majority of patches quest line essentially one of the final steps is to invade the npc that has this armor great horn taroff and upon defeating him you will then be able to obtain his armor and of course use it for yourself this armor has the best poise in the game along with some of the best resistances allowing you to trade hits and less likely to be staggered against most bosses. Although we're trading hits and healing ourselves with the blasphemous blade it will still only heal a certain amount. In fact for each successful hit of the taker's flame ability you will be healing 150 base HP along with an additional 10% of your maximum HP and then for every time that you defeat an enemy you will get a bonus 40 HP plus 4% of your maximum HP so essentially every time that you hit an enemy with the taker's flame you'll regenerate around about a fifth of your health and then get an extra 100 HP every time that you defeat an enemy. But where this might not be enough against main bosses that might hit a little bit harder, we can boost our health regeneration with items such as the Icon Shield and the Blessing of the Erd Tree. Now the Icon Shield is located in the Altus Plateau in the ruins next to the Minor Erd Tree right in this location that I'm showing on screen and when you do collect it and equip it on your character you will then passively be regenerating 3 health points every single second and then if you continue on throughout your playthrough until you reach the Morgoth fight or more specifically the Queen's Bedchamber in Liondale Capital you will then be able to pick up the Blessing of the Erd Tree which will then grant an additional 12 health points every second for 90 seconds after using that incantation. And the other beauty of having 38 points in faith is that is exactly the requirement that you need in order to use the Blessing of the Erd Tree. 
And just before I finalize the build and tell you about the talismans we're using, I've got a pretty cool opportunity to tell you about. That is because today's video is sponsored by MMO EXP. MMO EXP is the fastest and cheapest place to buy in-game currencies, and of course Elden Ring is one of the games that they specialize in. In fact, it's not just runes that you can purchase from them, it's also key items like the talismans I'll talk about in a moment. Their service is fast and easy, and because we're partnered with them, you can use the unique code JAZZA to get yourself 5% off any purchases you make on their website. And yes, that's for their entire site, so it's not just on the Elden Ring items. If you are playing any other games like Diablo 4, World of Warcraft, or even EFC 24, you can use my code JAZZA, J-A-Z-Z-A, to get 5% off any of your purchases. So if you're interested, you can head over to their website or use the link that I'll have in the description down below. So thank you once again to MMO EXP for sponsoring this video, but like I mentioned, let's jump in into the talismans you should use for this build. And for a first talisman, we're actually going to have one that's extremely crucial, as it's the reason why we stay in a medium equip load, and that is the Great Jars Arsenal. So that boosts our equipment load by 19%, and like I say, it's absolutely crucial for keeping us in the medium equip load. But another talisman that's also helping out with that is in fact the Erd Tree's Favor, and I've got the plus two variant on this particular build. You can use essentially any variation, whether you've just got the standard one or the plus plus one version, as that will essentially raise your maximum HP, which if you remember me explaining the HP at the beginning, where if we added 10 extra points into Vigor, we'd only be getting an additional 54 HP. With this talisman alone, you get an additional 75, so it's incredibly more beneficial to equip something like this, rather than delving the extra 10 points into Vigor, because yeah, it's just not worth it. But we also get a nice healthy boost to our stamina and the equipment load again, which is not really necessary, but it is still helpful, I guess. And then of course, to boost the damage we're doing with the Taker's Flame ability, we've got the Shard of Alexander, as that will greatly boost the damage output with this weapon. But then finally, and I would say you can swap this out with maybe the Blessed Dew Talisman, but I've personally gone for the Dragon Great Shield Talisman. That is because, again, you will just get a healthy boost to your damage negation, meaning that even the harder bosses in the game will still have a tough time defeating you. In fact, I've got gameplay of going up against Melania, and even when I got myself stupidly stuck in the full flurry of her waterfowl attack, I still managed to somehow come out alive, purely down to this talisman and the armor. But other than that, we are running the usual buffs, which are Golden Vow and Flame Grant Me Strength. And then just finally, with the Wonder Physic, you can do one of two things. You can either make a defensive mix with the upper line hard tier and the upper line bubble tier to essentially negate damage damage even further and give yourself a free hit with the bubble tier or you can make an offensive mix by including the faith knot tier and the flame shrouding crack tier to just boost the damage output with the blasphemous blade and more specifically with the taker's flame even more than what you were doing already and essentially once you combine all of that together you will have the tankiest build whilst also regenerating your health whilst having a weapon capable of doing two two and a half thousand damage and breaking their poises very very easily. I can't lie, this is one of the only times that I've actually used like a tanky build. I'm normally the classic DPS player and I'm always looking for ways to out damage my opponents, but even still I had an absolute blast using this build and there was something quite comedic about just watching your enemies try to hit you, which essentially did bugger all and then you can just slap them around the head with the blasphemous blade and laugh in their face once you defeat them. But that is essentially everything that you need to know to make the tankiest build you can in Elden Ring. And just before I let you guys go, I just wanted to say a massive thank you to everybody that has supported this channel. Whether this is the first video of mine that you're seeing, or you've been around since the very beginning, it is because of your amazing support that opportunities such as having sponsorships on my videos, which is still crazy to say by the way, are actually a physical possibility. And my dream of being a like full-time YouTuber is slowly becoming a reality. Of course, that also means that I I can put a lot more time and focus purely on YouTube so you can expect to see a lot more videos and although maybe some of them will include further sponsorships, I promise I won't go full sellout mode and I'll only be promoting stuff that I think could be of genuine interest to you guys because I know for us console players it can be a bit tedious grinding for those runes especially if you're trying to get to max level so maybe it might be of interest for some of you out there but I also understand that there's probably a few of you that aren't exactly interested and that's absolutely fine. 
fine. But again, without going too deep or repeating the same words over and over again, I just wanted to let you all know that you're all freaking amazing, and I honestly cannot thank you guys enough for the support that you've shown this channel, especially over the last 18 months. And the fact that we're closing in on 15,000 subscribers is again just super surreal, and I never thought I'd ever be in this kind of position. But like I say, I'm not going to repeat myself, I won't go on too much, so hopefully you have enjoyed this video. Of course, go and have an absolute blast of this build and let me know how you get on. And as always, if you've got any ways to make this build better, maybe throwing in some extra incantations, then let me know in the comments down below. Of course, feel free to share your ideas with other people in the comments as well. But for now, I'm going to love you and leave you. Thank you for the last and final time. And I guess I'll catch you in the next video of whatever it is that we make. Bye-bye.